Hello, my cross stitch friends. Welcome to my channel. My name is Amanda May McNaughton, and I am the lead designer behind the brand Ardith Design. I love counted cross stitch, sustainable stitching, and sharing my passion for things with all of you. If you are new to my channel, welcome. And if you are returning, I'm so happy you came back because I have some new releases to show you. If you are new, I'm just, oh, I'm so excited that you found me and hopefully you like my channel. I love talking about counted cross stitch. And in this global world that we live in, I want you all to know that I wanna create a little safe space, part of the internet here. And I believe uh, diversity and inclusion matters, especially in counted cross stitch. I have, yeah, two releases works in progress, some save the stitches, all the things. I also have some haul, um, I some stash acquisitions to show you. So without further ado, we'll get started. Yay! I am wearing my Bob Mackie shirt in commemoration of my first thing I'm gonna show you. I got all dolled up. I was trying to channel my inner Dolly Parton, you know, I poured myself a cup of ambition. I'm ready to talk about my stitching. So here we go. The first announcement that I am, oh, I'm so excited. Okay, I am doing a live webinar on May 5th at noon uh, at 12 o'clock uh, Eastern time, because I'm in Maryland, ha. And I'm gonna be teaching and talking to people about how to create this counted cross stitch pattern, yay! This is an exclusive pattern that I made just for Sulky of America. I sent them my, you know, we talked sketches, so I, from the very beginning, my sketch artwork, all to all the way to the finished product. It is on an act-filled wire frame, and it's on a Wichelt 16 count Ada, and it's um, French Country Mocha. And then all the threads here are all sulky threads. So if you don't wanna like, participate in the webinar, but you would like the pattern, or you wanna buy the whole kit, the kit comes with all the floss and the fabric and the pattern. And I think Sulky's doing a couple other little goodies. I'll have that link below and it's exclusive to them. So this will not be in my website. It's over at Sulky's website. So I'm so excited. This has the cotton, 12 weight cotton petites. It's got the acrylic fillion thread here, uh, accent on the bison and on the eagle. And then it also has the poly sparkle threads and the stars. And this, I made it into a wall hanging and I added little bunting with the Mill Hill gold beads here. And so the bunting, there's like three different layers of bunting. I just couldn't help myself. I just kept adding. And then the decorative top stitching is all done with the poly sparkle. And oh my gosh. So this pattern is very special. I try to encompass a lot of things when I think of Americana in cross stitch. So the first thing is the stars. Back here, there's a motif of all stars and then stars in the bison here. And there are 56 stars total. And that is to commemorate or acknowledge not only the 50 states in the United States, but also the six US territories, you know, District of Columbia, America, Samoa, US Virgin Islands, you get the idea, right? So <laughs> I am really excited to honor our states and our US territories. Then the national bird in the United States is the bald eagle. So the eagle, the national mammal, this came out, I wanna say 2016, 2017, the United States declared the bison, the national mammal. Then I, all, I put in the red poppies here and that's to symbolize our 
troops and our veterans and those who have served and who have not come back. It's the Flanders Field Poppy. The background mountains and thinking of national parks, the oak is the national tree of the United States. And then in the planter pots here, below the poppies are the ro are red roses, which are the national flower. So that is, that's the design. Oh, and then, so in here, in the buffalo, the there's the river and the sockeye salmon. And this is the importance of conservation. It's also important to discuss like how um, we're, they're trying to reestablish the hatcheries and the, the spawning areas and the dams and how things are getting readjusted and redone um, in order to save and preserve um, our nation's salmon. And so I wanted to do that. And then of course, who doesn't love a good pinwheel and bunting? I, I couldn't help myself. Just I just kept adding bunting. Bunting here, bunting here, bunting everywhere. So <laughs> you um so yeah, that so this is my pattern. I've been working on this for a long time, and I'm just so excited to finally be able to show all of you. And then I've created also, and it's for Sulky too, it's um, hand embroidery of the of the motif here. So woo, all the good things. So those are two of my, or one of my new <laughs> releases. And then, oh, do you want to see my second new release? Okay. I... I am a cross-stitch designer, and with that, I, you know, design th for my own website, artithdesign.com, but also I submit proposals to magazines, publishing houses, obviously thread companies, right? And I've adopted the phrase, and it's by Wayne Gretzky, and yes, it's a sports metaphor. Do I play sports? No, but... Wayne Gretzky always said, you miss 100% of the shots that you do not take. So with that, I do submit a lot to, to publications to, to see about, you know, being included in magazines and stuff. Well, I get told no a lot. Like not just a little bit, like a lot, a lot. So there, there's an idea of resilience and okay, you got told no, but that doesn't mean that you're down and out forever. So with that said, I submitted a design to uh, Just Cross Stitch for last year's publication, but I submitted it in 2019 because publishing and all that stuff, you know, everything takes a long time. Well, it was not accepted, which is okay. So that just meant that I needed to spend time and stitch it up and release it myself. So with that, here it is. Here is my new design. It is called Hello Summer. And it is stitched on Luminous Fiber Arts, Misty Purcell's custom dyed linen. It's 32 count faded denim linen. And this piece could fit in an eight by 10 beautifully. I framed it in 11 by 14 with this huge margin border because I literally could not cut this fabric up. <laughs> I ordered a fat, or uh, an eighth of fabric from Misty. I was gonna show you the fabric tag. I don't know where I put it. And I literally, this is the fat eighth <laughs> framed in 11 by 14, cause I could not cut it up. I spray painted this frame. I got the frame at a thrift store. It actually had a save the stitches in it, which I washed in this, in this pile to show. But um, so Hello Summer, and it has jellyfish, seahorse, little crab, uh, and it has the kelp as the border. And I just love this so much. So this is stitched all with sulky threads, but I'm going to have the DMC conversion. So this is it. And then I couldn't help myself. I, I, I did that, but then I had to make a little fishy to go with it. So there's also this little fish 
and this is stitched on a similar 32 count blue linen, but it's not this linen because I couldn't bring myself to cut it up. But so, you know, all those little scraps that you have, like the little cuts, like when you cut projects, that's what I used here. And then I sewed it up and then I did the method of flocking your stuffing, you know, and then compacting it in and then using an owl, A-W-L, not owl, hoo -hoo owl, to get it all in. And then as soon as I thought I had it compacted enough, I stuffed more in. I think it's called the, the Vana Twisted Stitcher Drum Finish Guidelines, where you stuff and you stuff more polyfill. And then just when you think it's about to burst, you add more. So that's what I did. But I had sewn this all the way around with a quarter inch margin all the way around. And then in order to turn it right side out in the center here of this backing fabric, I cut it and that's where I used to stuff it. And then once it was all good and stuffed, I used the fabric, I put Aileen's tacky glue and then I, I matched up the print of it and then used the Aileen's craft tacky glue and, and glued that over. Now I was thinking I could add some like a felt patch or a couple buttons, but so far I like the way he looks like this, my little fishy. So this, this is the pat, this is the pattern. It comes together. And then, so I was thinking about even with a big frame, right? So you could dangle, I could dangle my little fishies here or just have them set like here. Oh, I love it so much. So that's my hello summer. Oh, and I forgot to say this, this one right here, it's the Americana cross stitch kit at Sulky, but the official title of the pattern is Patriotic Bison. So I'm gonna put, let me see if I can put him up there just so I don't, if I leave him down on the ground, either the dogs might grab him or the kids might grab him. Kids are still young enough, but they don't know to leave stuff alone. Okay, I'm gonna bring the camera and pull you a little closer here. Okay, I'm gonna move the camera, here we go. Up. Oh, while I have you up here, right here is the Mung Butterflies. I This is the original and I charted it, I did an adaptation and it's still going where all 100% of the sale of that chart is going to be donated, I'm gonna be donating directly to the Hmong Cultural Center of Butte County. Butte County is in California, Northern California. It is where I went, where I lived, went to college and where I was first um, introduced to the Hmong culture. So uh, that is Hmong butterflies. I wanted to make sure I said that before I forgot. Okay, I have some Save the Stitches. I wanna show you. Okay, I left my house it's been, it's been a rough couple weeks. <laughs> I had to get my roof replaced. Um, a part of my house, the, the roof had to be replaced. And then they go to the doctors, you know, life, life gets in the way, right? Well, I masked up already. So I just, my car just kind of veered its way over to the thrift store and I got a couple things. The first thing I got was this, <laughs> I couldn't help it. It says mom's kitchen. It's just a cute little, but I love strawberries and it's so dang cute. And it's stitched on a 14 count cream Ada. And it says mom's kitchen with the strawberries and there's the back stitching. And this frame I think is so cute and fun. And this is what like the back looks like. I paid $1.25 for this. I couldn't leave it. All right, the next save the stitches. I, uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about it. Okay, this is a Hummel, the artist. Uh, it was tr uh, original Hummel and then charted for cross stitch. And she's so cute. She's got her smile, she's feeding. There's a little chick and then there's the hen and rooster, flowers. This is professionally framed double matted the person out of you know did the hummel signature but did not put their own signature or date which is totally fine there 
I looked and there's a couple spots. It looks like it was framed with staining already there, which is, it's, it's okay. And it's on a, like a 14 count kind of cream white Ada. And it looks like the glass is one of those where it's not, doesn't glare very much. I don't know if that's museum quality or just like a reflective, uh, uh, a low glare. All right, so she's 14 count Ada, cute as can be. Many people stitched the Hummel pieces back in the 70s, Paragon Crafts and several other companies were, I think, I wanna say Paragon Crafts really had the licensing for the Hummel in needle point and in counted cross stitch. Hummel was huge. It's and crap, even crawl, crawl embroidery. And so a lot of people are like, oh my gosh, it's like the 1980s geese. Like you see the 70s Hummel and you're like, oh, too much, too much. I can't see another Hummel. Well, I, I had to save her. I had to save this little girl. She had been at the thrift store. She'd been hanging up on the wall since before COVID-19. So before March of 2020, she was hanging. And they had a good high price on her, which rightfully so, right? Well, she sat for over a year and thankfully she was there lot, you know, more than six weeks. You know, a lot of you have heard my conversations about Save the Stitches where a lot of the for-profit thrift stores or op shops, charity shops, have like a deadline of like six weeks and if it doesn't sell it gets thrown away or sent to the buy the pound facilities okay well this one happened to leave it up for over a year which is awesome when I went into the thrift store it was right by the register at the 75% off bin clearance now that means because I'm familiar with this thrift store that if it doesn't sell it's going in the garbage, like the big industrial dumpster. It doesn't mean it gets sent off to a by the pound. It goes into the dumpster. So when I saw this for 75% off, I had to buy her. And the manager literally said to me, thank you for buying her. And I said, when was her due date to be thrown away? And the manager said, I don't want to tell you. I said, but she would have been thrown away, right? And she goes, thank you again for buying her. She would have been thrown away. So she didn't tell me when, but it she was on her last go. So I did grab her. Now, I don't know if I'm gonna leave her in the frame. Like I said, professionally framed, behind glass, all the things. Or if I'll take her out and add her to a project bag, I'm not sure. But she's not in the landfill. So I feel good about that. So there we go, my little happy Hummel girl. So those are my Save the Stitches for this week. I don't really have, I should say this week, like I'm gonna have more next week, who knows? I'm a firecracker, you don't know what's gonna happen with me. Okay, I started a project. I'm, I have my basket here and stuff's not technically in order. I started a project, <laughs> I, received a large gift a couple years ago from my friend her one of her family members had passed and was a crafter and loved Christmas stuff and she gave me a lot of the Christmas and the craft stuff and and I was going through some of the stuff and I had found this little angel and she'd had it she had started stitching it she it was left in the little hoop, you know, um, fabric has a memory. So it had been in that hoop for, I don't know how many years. So I took it out of the hoop. I washed it, um, hand washed. I, then I pressed it and then I folded it over and I started stitching on it. She had marked the uh, actual pattern. So I don't have a working copy. I don't have the image of what it was, but I do know it's a dimensions kit uh, and it is Daydreaming Angel. I tried looking it up to see if it was still in print and I couldn't find anything. It's uh, number 6704. 
daydreaming angel. I went on Pinterest, everything. I couldn't find a finished image of what it looks like. But she had the threads all sorted on one of these really cool, the floss fly, floss organizers, like the marbled <laughs> plastic. So everything was ready to go. So I picked up, this was an abandoned project that was gifted to me. And I picked it up in the last couple weeks. And I added, after cleaning her, I added the pink down here. It's got some more parts to the dress. And then I have to do the face and everything. But I would say she's like 80% done. So I'm excited to finish that. Again, I rescued an abandoned project. Or gifted a gifted rescued semantics anyway so there's that all right I have a finish I'm very excited about oh I have several finishes holy smokes hold on to your hats or decorative hair bands okay I <laughs> finished the prairie schooler night flight after making some mistakes I decided to omit the picket fence and the dates and just do the center motif. So with that, here she is, my finish. I have not ironed her though. So here is my finish. She's on a piece, I wanna say this is the 1776 linen from Color and Cotton. I stitched her with three DMC 3371, which was the called for dark with two strands. And then that orange is the custom dyed orange. It's called Purdy Orange from Victorian Motto Sampler Shop. Um, she dyed, dyed that specifically for my banana pants Purdy pattern I did. So I used the orange there. And then the center, which I tried stitching her with the Sulky 1005, which was black with just one strand. And I didn't like how she looks so you can really see a difference between one strand of 12 weight and two strands of dmc specifically the black on 32 count fabric you can really see a difference but now that it's all done i love it and i'm not even worried um all the back stitching it took me about three hours to do the back stitching but i did it like at 11 o'clock at night in like dimly lit light my hand was like kind of mangled from you know, life. So <laughs> I backstitched with one strand of the 3371. So I'm excited. You can't, I can't see my mistakes now that it's done, but I know that the counting, it wouldn't have lined up if I had tried to add the border. So I'm very happy. I love, I love Prairie Schooler stuff. I just love it. So <laughs> that's one of my finishes. I have a couple other finishes. Let me see if I can find, make sure I can show you the patterns before. Okay, yes, 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 yes. Okay, okay, okay. I have this um, hanging on the gentleman's trouser hangers. I got some more of them. So there, this is what they, it's got like a white felt. And then, so you can hang it. Waiting to be fully finished. I was gifted, I, I have my finishes under here, but I'm gonna show you a couple. Okay. I was gifted this last year from my friend Grace, my midwife and friend from West Virginia. So she gifted me this and I washed it. It still had some stuff and that's fine. So it's on a 14 count. So I'm gonna figure out what to do with this. It might be made into an ornament for my bird wall. The second is a save the stitches I got and I took it out of the frame. It had a round mat and I washed it and I pressed it, but it's you can see the staining from the round mat. It was like not acid free. And then I did trim some of the extra threads. There's still a lot left, but there was a lot of like really long threads here and I trimmed that down. But I washed, I took this out of the frame and I washed it and it's so cute. I wanna see about putting it on a project bag or like an autumn inspired thing. Again, I got this under $5. I can't remember exactly how much I paid for it uh, at the thrift store. All right, here are my official finishes. Okay, I finished the giraffe. 
pattern. I did this in conjunction with Abby Bella Stitch for the hashtag Stitch Asia. I had had this in my want to stitch pile for several, for a couple years, and I finally bought the pattern on Creative Poppy and started it. I stitched it with all the called for DMC with two strands, but I, I used a different fabric. It's like the Azor Blue 32 count, and it's a piece of the 9 by 13 that I had gotten uh, at 123 Stitch. So here is my finish. Now, a few things about my finish. You can't really see it here very well, but there's only one, two, three little baby boars. But my, my pattern has four baby boars and three flowers instead of just two flowers. Well, Amanda May here miscounted and I made a mistake, I added, so this little baby boar here was supposed to be under this fl flower spot here, but stitching at night, not paying attention, I stitched this little one all the way down here on accident. Well, I had her all stitched up. I was not gonna rip her out. The frog, you know, rip it, rip it, is not gonna be seen. I'm not doing it. So what I ended up doing, I had all of this space open here I decided to add a fourth bore, so I just looked at this face and then kind of tried to fill in the body and I put a, a wandering leaf there. This part here, I just kind of moved that motif down. I added a longer stem on the flowers here and then added, added this third one here, all of which were you know, charted in the pattern. So instead of ripping out my mistake, I just extended the pattern down and I had enough fabric here. This is a nine by 13 piece where I was able to do that. It did take me, I would say an extra seven or eight hours to try to like fix and adjust and work down on my, mis work off of my mistake and try to make it all work. But I spent a couple hours doing the little baby boar. So if I would have taken that out and then restitched that, that the time would have been, I would dare to say the same if I would have frogged or ripped out the, my mistake. But now I have four baby boars and an extra flower. So I feel like I'm winning, you know, turning, what, what does uh, Bob Ross say? Mistakes are just happy little accidents. So there we go. So I'm so excited. I, I looked to see if this would fit in an eight by 10 frame because it's in a nine by 13 and it will. So I might do that or I might make it into something. I don't know, but I have a finish and then, oh my gosh, I'm so excited about this finish. Okay. Where's the pattern? Okay. <gasps> Plum Street Sampler. I finished my Sweetheart Hill. It is stitched on a 32 or a 36 count chickpea fabric. Right here, back here is my Fox by Barbara Anna and it's also stitched on chickpea. And so here, I'll move the camera in real fast and show you. So hold on. So that Fox right there is stitched with the same fabric. And I named my fox chickpea in honor of the fabric. And the other part of the fabric is the finish for Sweetheart Hill. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love this so much. I can't even with this. I, this was my first ever house that I built. So my big red house, I used the Red Work Sulky Bobbin. It's the variegated red. I also, here, I'm trying to see if I can get up closer. This is all stitched with Sulky. I had originally started the grass here in a different green and y'all told me last year, Amanda May, that's not gonna work, rip it out. So I ripped it out and I started, I redid it. I did take an artistic liberty with the gentleman. His top coat, his waistcoat is a green instead of what it was charted for. I added 
for her, I added lip, like um, back stitching line for a single lip instead of adding a full cross stitch for her lip. And her hair, I lengthened the back of her hair a little bit. Yes, and I, I left my people white and I'm really excited. I tried to see, this is definitely like a custom frame situation. I, I played around trying to put it in an eight by 10 and, and just the, the shape of it is not fully square, but it's deceptive because it looks like it could almost be square. But so I think I'm going to get this professionally framed. I think I'm, I think I'm there psychologically. It's okay to ask for help. It's okay to send things off for framings. <laughs> I, I'm really excited that I have this piece done. I wanted to have it done before my anniversary and if I got it done, let's see if I can hang it here. You can kind of see it. Okay, that's good, right? Okay, the last thing I wanted to show you is a piece I got several years ago before I knew what punch needle embroidery was. I didn't know what this thing was, but I thought it was so pretty. And sure enough, it's punch needle. So I washed this and got it ready. I could not get some of the staining out, which is okay. But I wanted to show you that this is like a like on cotton fabric, a print, like screen printed. But I wanted to show you the back of it. Now, I did not do this piece. I purchased this. But that is punched so you punch so someone asked me why do you reverse everything so you're gonna punch from the top here and then your finished design boom is gonna be here so there's your yay I don't know what I want to do with this it is very mod I thought if I if I I could maybe get that stain out but then that's too close and then I thought maybe I could add Maybe I could punch a couple little things in to hide the stains. Or I don't know. But I love it. Do you want to see more cross stitch stuff? Yeah? Oh my gosh. Okay. In my little bag. Oh, so this is out of, coincidentally, the, I know, not organized here. I'm going to just kind of go like this. This is out of the magazine issue for Just Cross Stitch the Hello Summer issue, and it's this piece. And I got a little bit more done on this. I got the bird. I messed up on those sails something fierce, but I just f kind of fibbed it. I need to add all of the charcoal gray as in a 414 DMC, which I can't find my skein. And I didn't want to put an order in for one skein, so I'm just kind of working around it. So I've got the lighthouse, I added the clouds, messed up the sail, and I'm moving down. This is on a piece of fabric, on uh, another one of those 9 by 13 cuts of fabric. I, I, wrote, I put it on my, it is the 36 count smoke blue Edinburgh linen. So I'm slowly making progress on that. I'm using the patriotic threads from color and cotton from her I want to say 2019 box the next thing I have is in my bag I'm sure it is out of the tending the garden book and I've heard many of you say dang it Amanda May you made me order that book sorry not sorry I don't I don't know how to respond to that like is that a good thing or did I did I cause you grief? I'm sorry. But here it's this pattern. I think it's lovely. Leslie of Fat Cat Flossing, a couple years ago, did this project. That's what inspired me to buy the book. And here I am now talking to you all about the book. See, see how we positively influence each other? Okay. I am stitching this on a piece of X Ju design fabric. It is a 32 count and it's called Little Bunny. 
and I have been very studious and I have been building my little house. I am using the called for toasted barley, which is the brown, but that purple is the from the XG Design Halloween, some of her Halloween threads, and that purple. Oh, the purple is a gentle art, excuse me. So I I fibbed. That's a limited edition gentle art. And then the pinks are exude. Excuse me. I said that wrong. It's starting to dim over here. So I am stitching this. Did I say 32 count? It's a 36, excuse me. A 36 count fabric. I'm stitching it with one strand and it's it's been lovely. I, I've been really enjoying stitching with the one strand. And so if you wanted to stitch it with one strand on Ada, I would suggest an 18 count Ada fabric. If you're gonna stitch with one strand for this project, I think that would look lovely. So there I got that. Oh. I worked a little bit more on my badger um, from the Dawn of Memes by Ink Circles. I want to have this done to give to my husband for our anniversary, his birthday, one of those, you know. And I know the threads. I got to get me more of the Kelly Stadola Bitsy Bob organizer thread organizers this is ridiculous you're seeing me true colors here <laughs> so I added I came down here into the corner I added the mushroom I got to start working on that snake but I'm working my way over this needle minder is from sassy jack stitchery when I did their 2020 valentine's day um exchange which was super fun I have no, that was the first and only exchange I have ever participated in. It was really fun. All right. And then, oh, I'm really excited about this one. I did a bunch of work on backstitching. A bunch, a bunch of work. This is the Marie La Tweenette pattern. And this is by Peacock and Fig Fabrics. And these are her beautiful her color palette love it and I gotta find the picture to show you there we go. this is what the finish looks like I think it's so it's so cute look at her ah, look at that so lots of back stitching I got a lot of the hair put in that wig and it's in two different shades. And I mean, I'm amazing what backstitch does, right? Pa pow So I got to backstitch around her necklace and finish backstitching around the hair. But she is really coming together. Uh, again, I just, I think it's so cool. It's so cool how cross-stitch, you can just get so much dimensionality with just backstitch. Or if you don't like backstitch, like the you, full cross stuff, like, oh my gosh, you can you can make your cross stitch look like watercolors, hyper realism, uh, full coverage, sparse, primitive. I, it's just so awesome. So <laughs> it's really cool. Oh, um, I was featured, uh, me and s several other cross stitchers um, were f featured in the blog on Redfin this week. Um, I, had the, I have the link on my website in my blog uh, about obviously the popularity and emergence of grand millennial style. Hello, I'm a, I'm a grand millennial over here, <laughs> but also just how much cross stitch is making a comeback and how to design your home decor around your cross stitch collection or vice versa. So I was excited to participate in that. So yay. Okay. My last work in progress is my little lemon cat because I've learned that I love, Barbara Anna is one of my favorite designers, Barbara Anna Designs. She is a designer out of Spain. A lot of her stuff can be purchased either on Creative Poppy or the, there's a Russian store I've not ordered from before who has um, like exclusive kits and stuff. She's also in Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher Magazine. 
she has done just a lot of good things. So here is her lemons cat. And I am stitching this on a piece of nougat fabric. I don't remember if this is a 32 count or a 36 count. I want to say it's 32 count. I had made a couple mistakes and my cat accidentally is green because I thought a brown that I had was a brown. No, it's not a brown. It's a green. So that again, late night stitching. I did add the eyeshadow and made so her eyes would pop a little bit more. And then I've been filling in her skirt and I'm really excited with how she is looking. All the called for colors, not the called for fabric. And again, I made, I modified so you could see her eyes better. I just really, I'll show you the side by side again. Uh, I love Barbara Anna's stuff. I don't like modifying her work, but I was having, like I said, just a hard time. I just, I just felt like her eyes needed to really just boom, come out. So I'm excited for that. Yay. All right, that is my works in progress. I My last little bit I wanna show you is some stash acquisitions, AKA my haul. If you are into that, I purchased a couple things. Um, I don't condone, I'm not encourage, trying to encourage dress buying or anyone going into debt, okay? So I'm just speaking from my personal thing. I was just, having a hard time my roof it was raining and my roof was still leaking and all this stuff so I got a newsletter email from one of the shops that I like to order from and they said hey this is in this is in stock come and order and I went yes click and I got the book as you can see I have been working feverishly on stitching flags and apparently I couldn't get enough so I got the book. I got it for this piece. I love this. I think I saw this the first time a couple years ago on a fellow floss tube channel and I fell in love with it. And of course it was severely out of print, hard to find pattern. So now I, I bought the book just for this pattern. I don't know when I will start this, but I have it. Because I could not let that travel alone, I decided to buy a yard of fabric and it is mask fabric. And it's got the you know, masks. We're going to be wearing masks for a long time. And so I, even just, you know, safety, all the things. So I ordered the, the, this panel fabric and I just think it's so lovely. I haven't decided if I'm going to mix and match, like they give you some suggestions, mixing and matching the colors and the prints, or if I'll do the same, I'm not sure, but they said, um, 10 of this and then 10 of the, the style here where it's, square. So I'm excited, you know, more goodies to stitch and work on. And then my last thing that I did purchase is the set of, where'd it go? I dropped everything. A set of really pretty floss. Uh, it's the Christmas floss from X Jude Design, her floss pack. It is not what I expected, but again, computer monitors, things look different and I'll use it. I will. I just like this, this looks very pastel. These are very pastel and I don't know. I, I guess I, when I see the right pattern, it'll, it'll tell me, yes, I'm thinking there's a Christmas goat pattern that is in the magazine, uh, the Joy of Stitching magazine um, that I showed, I did a flip through of my favorite patterns. It's an Australian, they, they re-released all the bundle of all the magazine. Anyway, there's a Christmas goat in there and I think that they, these colors might work for Christmas goat. So I, I'm excited and they're, they're really pretty. I just, I guess in my mind, I just thought of them as being like deeper and richer 
rather than brighter, but I love stitching bright colors. So I don't know why I'm being a, you know, I need to, I need to check myself. Okay. Oh, I'm so excited that you all joined me this week. I am so grateful for all of you. I hope that you enjoyed my video. I would love it if you liked and subscribed. If you are interested in this, one of these, I would love it if you used one of my links and did that or purchased a pattern from me or, you know, just spread the word about my channel if you can't purchase anything. Uh, there's no strings attached. I'm just vocalizing and asking just in case. Uh, I want to send you lots of love and I apologize for my absence. The kids are okay. My dogs are okay. Everyone's okay. It's just been, it's, life is difficult. And so I just keep moving forward and um, staying focused and positive on my stitching. So with that, I say much love to you and I'll talk soon. Mwah. Take care.